Good morning, Abundant Life. Good morning, family. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone stand, please. Good morning, Abundant Life out there in Facebook. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Let's open up, amen, with a verse of scripture this morning, and that's coming out of the book of 1 John chapter 4. Starting at verse 7. And it says in the NLT version. Dear friends. Let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Amen. Anyone who loves. Is a child of God. And knows God. But anyone who does not love. Does not know God. For God is love. God shows how much he loves us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life. Amen. Amen. This is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loves us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loves us that that much, we surely ought to love each other. Amen. 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 Now that's love. Hallelujah. I know today is as we celebrate Valentine's Day. And that's beautiful that God gives us each and every one to love. But that greatest, that greater, greater, greater love. That he has given us is when he died for us, died for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's love. That's love. So let us continue in the love of God and let's worship him today. Amen.
pain Break every chain Break every chain To break every chain Break every chain Break every chain Hallelujah I sort of feel like saying right now that uh, the power that's in that name and we know whose name to call on when we have any needs. To be met, it just came on me right then. So many of God's people going through a, a test in their physical health, and uh, we know there's power in that name to heal and minister. Father, we welcome you today. Thank you that you are our most honored presence here today, that we're not alone in this place, but that you've shown up where your people gather in your name, and we expect unbelievable things unbelievable yet we believe and thank you for ministering to your people today in jesus name and everyone said amen before you're seated wave a blessing to somebody if you're here in the auditorium we're dismissing our teenagers for uh, their youth ministry right now follow coach perk to the youth center and we welcome great church family. Well, we've been looking forward to today for a long time. We've been planning for today for a long time, but God has been preparing this service for a million years. He knew everybody that would be here and every need that would be under this roof and under your roof at home, wherever you're watching. And so uh, it's going to be a great day. You know, we have very special guests with us today. Laverne and Edith Tripp uh, are known around the world through Christian television, music, and preaching. Uh, we know them very well. Uh, our best friends for, I'm going to tell them how many years. I hate it, but it's okay. My life was changed forever 46 years ago this week when... Uh, Laverne called me and I had idolized this man. I've asked his forgiveness many times. Uh, but even before I met him, I idolized him because of uh, gospel music. I was the biggest gospel music fan in the world. And in 1970, early 70s, one, two, three, four, five, he was the king of gospel music, the only songwriter in. Christian music, even to this day, holds the record. The only one to write and record three consecutive number one songs. All three went to the top of the charts. And while he was on top of the charts, God did something great in the life of the king of gospel music. And he walked away from the spotlight and everything that came with it with a number one song on the charts answered the call of God into ministry as an evangelist. And the first thing he did <laughs> was hire me. It was mind-blowing. Yes, sir. thank you for that. It was, uh, it was just wonderful. And it's been, so we're celebrating knowing them and them being in ministry uh, 46 years this weekend. So it's an honor to have them. They need no introduction. I won't take any more of their time. We love them with all of our hearts. And thank you for loving them and opening your heart to receive what God has for us. Welcome Laverne and Edith Tripp as they come. <laughs> love you with all my heart. You're sweet. Thank you. <laughs> love you. There's no one like him. No one like him. No one can tell the truth. 
like he does. <laughs> oh, man. It is so good to be here. This is a special day because it was 46 years ago today that we held the first service, and uh, it was in the little town of Lake City. So that was the beginning. In that service, there was one soul saved, and we were, we were grateful. <clears throat> That was why I obeyed God because, I, I, you know, I didn't know what to do. Uh, several times I thought, you are crazy. You gave up everything. No, I went after everything. Because I'm here to tell you today and those of you watching, tell your friends to tune in. If you have friends that are suffering and they're hurting and they don't know what to do and they're discouraged because of what, is going on in the world because it is a different world now than it was 46 years ago. Now, I know that's old people talking, right? I understand that. But I thank God for his guidance, first of all, for the wife he gave me, because if it wasn't for this woman, I would not be here. I would be dead. If she, if she that's, told, that's the truth. She told me if I didn't quit getting <laughs> high, she was going to leave, so I quit getting high. <laughs> I'd be dead. God is power to, is able to fix anything yes, that is wrong yes, with you. Anything that's wrong with me. And by the way, there is not a perfect person on the planet. <laughs> not a one. Except Jesus. He came. He did it. He went away. Sent the Spirit. And he's present. All right? So, Edith... We have been married how long now? 57 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, just, she just celebrated a birthday, and I was 29. What was it, 39? 76. Yeah, of course. What? 76. I'm you that old? I'm old enough to tell it now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thankful for every year. You know what one little lovebird said to the other, honey? You sure are tweet. <laughs> what are you Little talking Valentine. about? Little <laughs> Valentine. You really messed me up now. <laughs> oh, this is Valentine's Day, ain't it? <laughs> oh, me. We are glad to be here. Amen. You want me to continue to talk, or are you going to? We haven't done this in months, y'all. <laughs> well, I we've had you, a lockdown too in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, and and all over the world. I know there's people watching this right now in India. They're already seven, eight hours ahead. They've already yeah. lived today. We haven't lived today yet. <laughs> so, but they're they're locked down too. It's just it's. Uh, however, <laughs> you know, people say this has been the worst year uh, last year of their life. This has been mm. the, one of the best years of my life. Because I got to unpack after 46 years. <laughs> I got to unpack and put my underwear in a drawer for the first time. <laughs> so it's been good for. And I, I, I got think I'll to, let you go ahead and keep talking. It's getting better. <laughs> and I got to cook. I got to love on my grandkids. I mean, it's just been a wonderful year for me. There, there is no telling what we will say today. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, so that's tuned. it for me. All I know to tell you is stay tuned. <laughs> yes, I am an evangelist, but I'm not like other preachers. I just want you to know that to start with. God gives me a message. He also gives me a tune to go with the message so I can preach my sermon in three minutes. Don't you wish every preacher <laughs> would do that? Except your pastor, because right. we watch him too. Right. We watch you all every Sunday morning. Yes, I got yes. to meet that singer up here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I every forgot where, where she said that. Every one. There you, oh, my goodness. <laughs> ah, what a blessing. Awesome. The band every is great. Singer is great. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So we come to sing, have a good time in the Lord, remember what he's doing. Uh, basically what he's brought us all through. However, what I'd like to do is start right now, this moment, and move on to the future. Because no matter what you're going with or have gone through or are suffering from, no matter what the situation is, we bring you good news today, and you're not going to hear 
Not one single lie coming out of this. I promise you that. Not a lie. Not a lie. You're going to hear the truth. So tell your friends to tune in with us live here. We're going to have a good time. Before I start to sing, one of my favorite people in the whole world is here today with his lovely wife. Brother M.G. Brother yeah. M.G. Sister. Y'all stand up. There she, y'all stand up. I just want you to meet this couple. Right there they are. Yes. So glad to have you guys. I'm so glad y'all are here. Yes. We go back a long ways. We've been to their church several times in Virginia. He and really knows us too, and he came this morning. <laughs> yeah, I love him. Now, all of you here, I don't know what you may be dealing with in your life, in your own mind, in your own body, and uh, or those of you that are watching, what you're dealing with, family problems, whatever they are, because I want you to know the government can't fix our problems. That's right. But I tell you who can, and the good news for you today is this. No matter what it is, how low it seems, and how impossible it may look to you now, today you're coming out of it if you will let the Spirit do the work. So let's do it, okay? We will rise above it all. Because I want you to know today, 
you're going to rise up from it all. I believe that with all my heart. I do too, yes. All my heart. You know, Pastor was talking about the songs. And yeah, you know, when I was a little, I was raised on a farm in North Carolina, a little place called Chocowinity, right on Highway 17, going from Maine to New York. I mean, yeah, from Maine to New York. From Maine to Florida, Highway 17. Boy, I'd look at that highway and just dream of going. And I love to listen to country music on the radio. I'd listen to that music, and boy, I wanted to do that. I walked in the house one day, and I was singing a country song, and the title of it was, the song was, uh, I didn't know God made honky-tonk angels. <laughs> And when I walked in singing that, my mama grabbed me by the ear, twisted my ear, almost picked me up, and she said, he didn't make them, and I don't want to hear anything coming out of your mouth like that again. Well, I knew I wasn't going to sing country. And I heard a quartet of all male groups singing, and man, I said, that's it. They were telling jokes and laughing and happy and singing good songs and good. I said, that's it. That sounds like a little country. I'll make it a little more country. So the Lord finally, he blessed me. I got a job with the Blue Ridge Quartet, and that's when the door opened. I'm not going to give you all history, but I'm going to sing it to you. Because with that group, and it was 1971, I'll never forget. I'll tell you this first. I put together a little medley because there's no way to sing all the songs. I might tell you how many later, but who cares? <laughs> I just came to hear me sing. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I hope you did because you're going to get to hear. Oh, my goodness. I love living. I love life. And I love, I love your pastor. Tell them what but, Lawson said. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought about doing. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. <laughs> The first, I'll never forget, a DJ came to me one night, and he said, uh, some time ago, a couple years ago, and he said, uh, Brother Tripp, I was recording when you were in Virginia and Roanoke the night that they announced that your song, I know, had just hit number one in the Southern Gospel Music charts. It was in January 1971. That's 50 years ago, isn't it? Good night. That's when the first song I wrote that went to number one went to number one. I'd written a few other songs before then. He said, I have a recording of it. I th they, they encored it four or five times, and uh, the Oak Ridge Boys came out on the stage and sang with us after a while. It, it was awesome. There was about four or 5,000 people there. So he said, would you like to have a copy? I said, yes. Now, he sent me the copy, and now remember, this was 50 years ago, so the sound wasn't as good as it is now. And they didn't have musicians, so maybe not as good as you have now. But it was fun. And so when I got it and listened to it, when my grandson, we have, we have six grandkids, five girls, and we finally got a boy. Thank you, Jesus. He is so good looking. He looks just like me almost. And anyway, <laughs> no, he looks better than me, and I thank God for that. I called him in. This has been a few years ago. I said, come here, son. You want to hear your granddaddy? I mean, when I was a star man, you want to? So I played it. He, yeah, I want to hear it. He's sitting there. And when that song finished, and it encored and encored and encored, and when it finished, he said to me, that was the number one song? I said, yes, yeah, see it right here on the CD. The guy wrote it there. It just hit number one. We just, he said, what did the other song sound like? <laughs> when I came home from the first time I told that to folks, I told him, I said, I just told them what you said. He said, Grandpa, I was just kidding. I was just playing with you. I said, okay, I'll accept that. I've, got by, by, I've gotten by a lot in my life <laughs> uh, playing about it or whatever. I better shut up. It's, okay, it's about to get close, ain't it? 
All right, so I put together a little medley of some of the songs. And um, if you recognize any of them, I want you to sing them as loud as you can. They're at home and here, all of you here in the auditorium. Let's, let's do it together, and here it goes. This is the first one. This is it. Some people say this old-time religion is just a thing of the past. Ah, but in this modern day that we're living, it's the only thing that will last. May think I'm a little old fashioned, well, friend, that's all right with me. I'm so glad that I am a Christian, and from sin I have been set free. I know, I know there's no doubt about it, he lives in my heart, and I know the shout, and I know, I know my sins are forgiven, I'm on my way. To a place that's called heaven Come go with me To the place that's called heaven That's the first one For so long now we dreamed about That day that soon shall come When he will split the eastern skies and gather all his jewels home. It won't be long, and I will see old Jordan breaking at my feet. Then up ahead, the lights are home. It's over, my journey's now complete. So let angels play their hearts so loud. Let trumpets ring loud and clear For the day we dreamed of for so long That day is almost here Yeah, the day we dreamed of for so long That day is almost here
sense the Holy Ghost. He gave us power over sin. And we'll not be defeated anymore. No, we'll not be defeated anymore. Jesus, church, we got the power. It's in the name of the Lord. No Satan rage, let him rage. We will not be defeated, cause we've got the power. It's in the name of the Lord. Sing it, everybody. Sing it now. We've got the power. We've got the power. That's it. In the name of Jesus. It's your name. Of Jesus, church. We've got the power. We've got the power. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Oh, Satan rages. This church will not be defeated. Will not be defeated. Cause we've got the power It's in the name of the Lord Yes, we've got the power It's in the name of the Lord Hallelujah Amen Praise God, you may be seated Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready to sing? One? I am. Let yes. me take a break. <laughs> can I go sit down, or you want me to stay up no, here? No, you can stay. All right. It's all yours. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm grateful to be here today. Amen. How about you? Yes. I'm I'm just grateful for Carl and Brenda. They've been friends, like they said, for a long time, and you do not realize how much they love you guys they talk about you all the time and what great people you are so I want you to know from me you are blessed this morning to have them you know what I love Jesus with all my heart but in the last few years I've come to realize how much Jesus loves me mm-hmm. he loves me you know, I know Laverne's my Valentine, and and I would never go out on Laverne, never commit adultery on him, because I know how much he loves me. I would never want to hurt him. And that's the way I feel about Jesus. I would never want to go out on him or idolize anything but him, because I know how much he loves me. He shed his blood on the cross for my salvation, for my deliverance, for my freedom. He took those stripes on his back for my healing. And all my life, he has healed me over and over. When I was born, I was born dead, and my grandma was in the room. The doctor laid me at the foot of the bed dead. My grandmother came over and laid her hands on me. And I started crying. She said, the Spirit said, you will live and you'll not die. But you will declare the works of the Lord. And I've been crying ever since, Laverne said. But I cry because I love the Lord. I love him so much. But he loves me. And if you're here today and you need a touch in your body, so many people now are sick. If you need a touch in your body or even in your mind, Just say, Lord, today I know how much you love me. And you took those stripes on your back for me. So receive it today. Because he is a healing Jesus. Hallelujah. He wants us just to believe it and receive it. When walking by the sea. Jesus calls Then all through Galilee The sick 
and the diseased he healed them all but this is now and Jesus hasn't changed his power is still the same as when he walked the shore this God of yesterday oh he's still my healing Jesus now and Nothing You're like healing, his Lord healing Jesus. power. Nothing like his healing Thank power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Remember what he said? He said, I will never you leave praise, you. Oh Lord. I will never forsake you. No. I will never turn my back on you. Whatever it is in your mind, your body, your spirit. There's no need to suffer with that any longer That's right. because he paid for it all. I was, sing, I was going to sing a new song, and I, I may do that, but I, want, I felt led of the Spirit to stop right now and pray for you here and you there. Are you ready to receive it? Why don't you just open your hands, open your heart. Some of you, it's a family member that's a problem that's driving you nuts. You don't know what to do. Turn them over right now. Maybe it's something tormenting your mind. And you know you don't want to think that way, but you can't seem to help it. Turn it over. Are you ready? 
Father. There's no one on this earth to compare you with. We've never seen you with our eyes, but we've been aware of your presence. And we are aware of your presence now. And we're not basing it on how we feel, but we're basing it on your word. Your word became flesh and dwelt among us. And as a person, human, as a human being, God, you took our guilt, you took our sickness, our poverty, our sin, our torment, our sadness, this heavy load that has gotten a hold. In the name of Jesus now, I come against every principality and power that has been assigned to bring destruction and death and sickness and poverty and sadness and decay into your life in Jesus' name. I bind you, command you to go to hell where you're supposed to be with the one that's going to be with you forever, and that's the devil. It was not. Hell wasn't created for us. It was created for the devil and those that follow him. We belong to Jesus, and the blessing of the Lord is yours Hallelujah. now. now. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise you, Lord. Oh, you say, well, I am not, I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not this. I'm not that. Well, it don't matter what you are. It's what he is. It's what he is. We receive it. He is Lord. After he rose from the dead, what did he say? All authority. I don't care who's talking about stuff. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Where are we right now? We're on earth right now. But we're aliens from another country. We haven't been there yet. But you know what? All that goodness and joy and that that we're looking forward to is available to us right here and now. You don't have to wait till you die physically to enjoy what he paid for in the flesh. Oh, hallelujah. You say, well, I've asked him and nothing's happened. Hello? If I told you how many years I struggled with addiction... I needed something to lift me up and something to bring me down and something to give me energy and something to give me sleep. And before you know it, I'm dependent on everything except Jesus. It's a bad place to be in. But oh, it feels so good to be free. I can look any crack addict right in the eye and say, I know one thing. You ain't going to get out of this by yourself. But there is one that has all power. And that one is God. Thank God for the doctors. I have a lot of doctor friends. I don't go to many of them because I'm, I mean, at 39, you're not going to. I can't help it. Brother Dave, about the time I get serious, I get silly. I guess it's because I'm so happy and free. I'm not under bondage nor slavery to anyone or anything. Including debt. (laughs) The reason that's so important to me is because I used to look when I was a little boy in the Sears catalog because we didn't have all that stuff. And I said, man, I'll be glad when I get 18. I can get credit. I'm going to have that and I'm going to get that and I'm going to get that. And And I did. And before I was 19, they came and got it. I'll never, I'll never forget the first time I heard a minister talking about you need to be debt free. I thought, yeah, I'd love to be. Why don't you pay me out of debt? Well, he said, I didn't get you there. You got you there, but there's a power greater than you that can get you out. I'm debt free. I'm not going to ever borrow it again. I don't have to have it. No matter what kind of deal Walmart's got. Of course, they won't let you have credit anyway, will they? (laughs) I don't want any. How did I get off on all that? 
thank God for what he's doing in our lives together. Let me bring this up to a close, kind of, not this very minute. Can I have about five, ten more minutes or so? All right. I want to do a new song, and I like it. It's on a CD. This is our, this is our 82nd full-length recording, and it's entitled, We Are One. Until you become one with Jesus, you're never going to know the glory and the peace and the blessing and the prosperity and all the joy that God has for you until you are one. So don't give up. And it's not on you trying to get better. It's on you trying to let go of yourself, your ideas, your plans. I've always had a plan, and I'd go after it, and I wouldn't stop till I got it. I have another plan now, and that's, Lord, what is your plan? Tell me. You know what God told me the other day? I'm praying. I'm asking him a bunch of questions, and I'm not seemingly getting an answer. And finally, he said, Laverne, from right now on, I'm going to answer every question you have. Yeah, that's what I did. I shut up. Because I didn't know what to ask for. And he, then he said that you need an answer too. Think about it. Is it possible you're asking God for an answer to questions that you really don't need an answer to? Because he's already taken care of everything you and me will ever need here and there. Now and forever. Yeah, we all hit some low places sometime. We all run into situations and we don't know just what to do. So... Here's what I wrote, and here's that message. I know I'm saved and spirit-filled, but forget who did it all. By grace, I'm walking through this world, even though I sometimes fall. I think I should be strong enough to make it by myself. Then suddenly, my mind goes back to where I got my help. When I don't know what to do, I turn to you when I cannot see the way you see me through. When my load low gets too heavy, I just throw it all on you. When I don't know what to do, I turn to you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know it's in your hand. By faith, I'm going through this world headed for the promised land. I'll not give up. I'll not turn back. The end is now in view. The God of lies keeps lying. But I listen to only you When I don't know what to do I turn to you Yes, Lord When I cannot see the way You see me through When the load 
obedience to him I throw it all When I don't know what to do I turn to you When my load gets too heavy When your load gets too heavy Throw it all on him He said bring it to me Throw it on me I'll take it I'll take every problem you got to you. So why not do it now? When I don't know what to do, turn it over to him. I turn to you. You know, I love and I thank God for the gift of writing songs because, like I said, he gives me a message. I put music to it and preach it in three minutes. Uh, as I told you, we've recorded 82 full-length recordings, 400 and something songs, I think, is what I've written. According to the best uh, that we can, that a million, over a million, 600,000 people have come to Jesus. I could tell you so many stories. I'll never forget that woman in Oklahoma came up at the table back there and said, she was just shining, happy. She said, I got to tell you something. She said, I walked in the room with a gun in my hand. I was ready to blow my brains out because my daddy raped me when I was a girl, told me all about the stuff she went through and, and how she had went through it in later years and how hopeless everything was. And she sat down on the edge of the bed with the pistol in her hand, going to kill herself. And the television came on and she did not turn it on. And I was talking. And she listened. She said, I surrendered. I called on him. I asked him to help me because I couldn't carry this anymore. And she said, now I'm teaching kids. I've got them. She had a ministry. I got, just blew me away. No, I didn't do it. He did it. But I was a vessel. And another vessel I met needed what this vessel had, and I gave it. That's the reason one reason I left the music business is because it always bothered me to charge people to come in and listen to the gift that God gave me. There was something about it. I'm not, anybody, do whatever you got to do the way you got to do it. We all got to do what we have to do. But remember, no matter what and who you are, the answer to the solution is your intimacy with Jesus. Because he will give you everything God has. He'll tell you when to shut up, even though you won't always do it. <laughs> He'll tell you when to be still. <laughs> He's kind of got the whole world, it's like the whole world's pretty still now, except in our minds. But you know what? God listens to everything the, the word says that he puts them in leadership in all the different nations of the world, and he listens to them making their plans, and he laughs at them. Do you know why he laughs at them? Is because he's already got a plan to bring life and joy and health and peace to every human being that has ever lived. That's hard for us to take in. But it's true. Don't miss it. You let that grow. Sometimes we talk so much and think so much, or I do, I do, that God has to speak to me when I'm asleep. Because that's the only way it looks like I'm going to shut up 
and be still. So one night, I knew he had told me to shut up and be still, and so I shut up and went to sleep. And while I was sleeping, this is the message that he wanted me to get. He wanted to speak through me. I want you to try to get a new picture right now. As he speaks through me, this is not, this is, this is it. In just a minute here, I thought I had it perfect, but I still make mistakes. I don't believe it either, but it's true. This is him speaking to you now. My back was torn to pieces. The blood free flow. My hands and my feet were nailed to the cross. You know. I could have come down and not suffer all that pain but I stayed on that cross and I whispered your name now will you whisper mine now will Jesus, the name is Yeshua, Jesus. You'll be saved, healed, delivered, heaven's riches you will gain. If you'll just take the time to whisper my name. I sit now with the Father always at His right hand. You know, <laughs> He just wants us to, to understand. That's all He wants us to understand. That every time we call upon Him, it's always the same that's when I just turn to the Father and I whisper your name so now will you whisper mine Jesus 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 now when you whisper his name he turns to the Father and whispers yours to the Father. You'll be saved, healed, delivered, heaven's riches you will gain. If you'll just take the time to whisper my Let me sing it to you now. Now, now, will you so grateful for God and his presence today because 
this is a special day. This is a special moment. This is a special time. And even though, even though we all make mistakes, he never does make a mistake, and he never will make a mistake. Edith has already mentioned about how much he loved you, how much he loved me. You know, I realize my life as a little boy raised in church, and I thank God for my mom and daddy. We were there all the time. They sent me off to Holmes Bible College. It was a high school and college combined in Greenville, South Carolina. When I was 14 years old, I went there in high school, and that's when I met Edith. Her folks had sent her there. They were hoping that they could help Holmes Bible School could help her, and my folks hoped Holmes would help me. And what it did, it joined us together, and we took off. And that was God's plan. He's got a plan for you, and all you have to do is call on him. Verse of scripture in the book of Romans. They're going to put it on the screen, I believe. And I want you to read that. Here's what it says. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Listen. For with the, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, if that's not good enough for you, I don't know what to say. Yes, this is a big book. Yes, there's a lot of good things in here. And one reason the world would love to do away with history, because the really thing they want to do is to get away with getting rid of this. I can assure you that will not happen. God will never let anyone not have the opportunity to hear the truth and then to receive it. So let's don't talk about religion. I could care less about religions. I want to know what the truth is and how can I have an intimate relationship with the one that has all power and created everything that is in heaven and earth. Don't even try to understand all that. Your brain can't handle it. Neither can mine. How do you, t we talk about love, Valentine and hearts and it's wonderful, yes. However, it's not that I love him, it's that he loves me. Why would he love us? Because he created us. It wasn't a surprise to him when Adam ate of what he wasn't supposed to have eaten, doing what he said don't do. That was a few years ago when that happened. <laughs> and here we are now. But here's what I have discovered. God made a new deal that was already in place before he laid the foundation of the earth. And that was, as a, at an appointed time, God would send his own son and cause his son to become a human being so that son could do what the first man couldn't do. And he had a choice in the very last days that he was here. His prayer was, Father, if there's any other way, please, let's take that way. Nevertheless, not what I'm asking for, but what your will is. He knew he left the Father and came here to do what he was about to do. And what was he about to do? 
pay for every sin you will ever commit. And it was done before you ever committed it. And the enemy don't want you to know that history. Because he died, they couldn't kill him unless he would have willingly let them do it. He could have spoken the word and killed them all. You know that and I know that. But God don't want you to die. He wants you to live. So Jesus died for us. He raised him from the dead. And the word is very clear. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. The reason, he put him in the tomb and sealed it up. But the reason he couldn't stay in there is because life can't stay dead. Life can't stay dead. Neither can life stay locked up and sealed up and controlled by the one that has been stripped of all of his power. And he did it for you and me. You say, what do I do? We just read it. If you're trying to get good enough and you're hoping, especially not only the folks here. I was raised in church and I, I just knew I would never go to heaven. I wanted to go so bad. I wanted to be with him so bad. But every time I would repent of the sins that I had committed and I would kneel at the altar and promise God, I'll never do it again if you'll forgive me. I won't ever do it again. And I meant it. And I did it again. Why? Because they come back again. Whatever has attacked you before, if they don't find somebody else, they're coming back. Isn't that what the devil did with Jesus? When he first came and was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit led him into the wilderness. And the devil started working on him then, and when it didn't work, he left. But he came back at the end, trying to stop him again. But he couldn't stop him. And he cannot stop you if you'll start trusting in Jesus, not in your righteousness. Because if you really believe you're holy and you're pure because you don't drink anymore, you don't do drugs anymore, you don't watch porn anymore, you don't cuss anymore, <laughs> And you don't, I mean, I, it gets so silly sometimes. You think, my God, what is wrong with us? Well, it's the one that wants us to be feel loaded down. Here's what I was taught most of my life. I was sin, I was sin conscious. I could stand here for days, I guess, and tell you the sins that I have committed over my years. But I prefer to not do that anymore, nor even think about that anymore, because it's forgiven and forgotten. You told me, you know what he told me to tell you and me to do? Let go of the past. I've already taken care of it. Don't worry about the future, because you ain't say nothing yet. The only thing you need to deal with is this moment. We're either going to say no or yes. So I'm willing to help you. I'm going to pray a prayer. I've had people tell me, you shouldn't tell people how to pray. Really? Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. We help each other. If you don't know how to pray, why don't you call on Jesus? Maybe you're at home, you're watching, wherever you may be in here. If you'll do it, say these words and open your heart. And no, you, before we pray, I want you to agree with me that you cannot get good enough to stand in front of God Almighty after all of what God did for us based on our righteousness because we can't get good enough. He will give you His righteousness if you trust on His Son, the Word. Bow your head for just a moment. Okay, will you do that?
Father, I thank you for everybody in this room. Thank you for this church. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I'm so glad that you take us just like we are. And you do the work in us. You know who's watching that's hurting? So I ask you to give them the courage now to reach out to you and admit they can't do it, but they believe you did it for them and you'll accept it. I ask that in Jesus' name. While your head's bowed, nobody's looking around. How many of you in this this auditorium say, Laverne, I want you to agree with me that I can turn it over to him now and receive from him the holiness and purity that he has to give to me and give me the power to live the life he wants to live in me. I want you to agree with me. If you do, me, I want you to slip your hand and hold it up high. Let me see it. Wave it at me. Wave it at me, and I will pray for you here and now. All right? Those of you there at your house, you want him to be Lord of your life. Say these words with me. I want everybody in this room to pray this prayer. Say these words out loud. Jesus, I believe with all my heart you are the Son of God. I believe you're the Messiah. I need you. I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe God raised you from the dead. And I believe you created me. I want to fulfill the purpose you have planned for me. And this day, I declare with my mouth now that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the years past and this fun time we've had. But I thank you for the new beginning for every one of us in this room and everyone that's watching no matter what part of the world. I encourage those of you that are watching let them know contact the church just let them know they're not going to chase you down they're not going to do anything we're just going to rejoice together the Bible tells us to share with others what God has done to you thank you for letting me be here today thank you for this time and thank you Jesus for your presence aren't you glad he showed up today aren't you glad he's here with us I, you know, say well I don't feel anything well I don't always feel anything too Don't you know now your feelings keep changing? (laughs) Facts change. Perception changes. So let's let God keep on changing us. Amen. 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 Pastor, I love you. I I want to say one thing before he comes and closes or whoever's going to do it. We're not going to take up an offering for our ministry today, and I want to tell you why. This church supports us every month. And as I said, we've seen over a million and a half, whatever thousand that that, that we know of that have come to Christ, and our children in India. Church, the pastors that you support there, and our church, they're locked down. They, we can't have services. It's, it's just a mess. And yes, it's going to change. We know that. And you're supporting those six, seven pastors every month. Over 10,000 children have come through our home since 1986. Mm. You've been a part of it. And we just keep on. There's some now in wanting so much to come. And, of course, things are messed up, and we can't do it according to. But we're ready, and we know God's about to change it. So here's all I ask you to do. I know when you leave, that's when you leave your tithe and your offering. And if you've already made up what your tithe, you know what it is and what you're going to give, will you change your mind just a little bit and add to it and give to the church? because they're going to pass on to us and help us to continue to do what we do every day, feeding people in the community thousands and thousands and thousands of meals we have fed in the last few months, people that don't come to the church, but we're loving them when nobody else is loving them. They're going to come. They're going to come. We're going to keep blessing them. 
We've got kids that want to come. We can't take them in anymore right now. We have to stop where we are. So do something extra for the church. Give it to them now. If you want to tell them, it's for, it doesn't matter. They, don't do that. Just, just give extra. We're not going to take up an offer. The only thing I am going to mention is on the table back there, I'm on, I want to show you what we've done. We put together a treasure chest. There is 80 gold nuggets in this box. There are 80 songs. I was thinking this morning, I wonder if there's a million dollars in this. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars that covers a years of our family. Healing Jesus is on here. Those songs I did, the, of course, there's 80 gold nuggets, 80 songs. If we've got a song on the mechanical ways that are available today, I think it's like a dollar a piece. So it's worth at least 80 bucks. I know how much it cost, but over the years, we've put it together. If you love our ministry, I got, I got a letter from a, a couple the other day. They got this. They said they drove for four and a half hours, and we were still singing. And they were laughing and fun, having fun listening to these 80 songs on this treasure chest. Also, this booklet. It's time that we're going to write the new one, and the new one is the rest of the story. <laughs> Because the people I couldn't write the book because of that are now in heaven. I can write it. No, I'm not going to talk bad about folks in the next one. But there's a lot of stuff in this one. Your, your pastor wrote this, and thank God he didn't write everything I told him. But many have come to Christ. This sells for $10. I told you this is worth $80. This is the new one, and we did the uh, one song from it. And my testimony is on here, too. I recorded it again because so many have come to Christ. It's $15. This little booklet for those that come to Christ, it's for, uh, uh, it's called, uh, what does that say? Spiritual, it's about spiritual growth. There are five little things here in this little booklet. And it's a couple of dollars. That'll pay for, the, for it and buy an extra one to give away. And we've given away a lot of them. So I hope you'll get, i tell you what we're going to do today, though. Since this is a special day, you can use your check. I hope you'll write a check or cash, and they're back there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have it all for $40. If you want this by itself, it's $40, and we'll give you everything else. How's that? <laughs> or you can buy one thing, and, you, and, and we will use this. The pastor's been so good. I have gone way too long. No, you have not. What time do y'all usually get well, out? We're usually Sunday? still here you're about now. Done sure. About 10 30, Something like that. I but. wouldn't come to church here again if you're going to keep me all day long. <laughs> you're on Tennessee time, yeah. Sir? You're on Tennessee time. It's 11 30 so here. I've got another hour. You, <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. Take, take it home with you. God bless you. If you love your pastor, will you tell him as he comes to close? Thank you, Laverne. Have you enjoyed Laverne and Eva's trip today? Everybody stand, if you will. Let's give uh, Laverne and Edith opportunity to get to the lobby before you do. And uh, uh, Miss Beth, if you will, put up our mailing address. This is going to be very important. Uh, those of you who are watching or will be watching, if you've prayed to accept the Lord today or to rededicate your life, write us and let us know at this address. You can also get in touch with us through our website. We're easy to uh, connect with. Uh, and I also want to say, Laverne and Edith, thank you for today, for 46 years, for changing my life a long time ago uh, and the lives of so many people we love and appreciate you and thank, uh, thank God for you and grateful you're with us today. Uh, and I want to say to everybody, listen, <laughs> uh, I was sharing with Laverne and Edith this, uh, this weekend. If you had told me uh, last March that uh, we would not be receiving an offering in this church, passing offering bags like we've always, for a year. I would probably have had a heart attack. 
but God has met every need. We've had nothing to uh, uh, go without, and so that's because of your faithfulness in giving. So uh, I want to thank you again for being faithful to the Lord in your giving. You know how to do it. You can bring it to the church, you drop it in the depository anytime. On your way out the door, if you're in the auditorium, there's a, an offering basket there, and also online at our website, through the mail, any way you give. You have to, you have to put some effort forth to give uh, these days, and God will bless you intentionally for do it. Thank you for being here today on a wonderful day. Hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday morning. God bless you all.